musician. I've been a musician a long time, my whole life here in New Orleans, I guess. And um, tried living outside of New Orleans a little while, but always came back. And maybe because I was born here, it's sort of, you feel like a little bit like you're like a, you know, we're like rare jungle flowers or something. You, you can live elsewhere, but you won't thrive. But that first week, there was no real uh, government forces, as it were, any kind of help of any kind. It was all just us on our own, you know? And then I would say after that first week is sort of where I draw the line of all of a sudden, boom, the army showed up and stuff. And when the army showed up, then we got to not have to do some of those functions that we were doing, which gave me the extra time. That's when I started Radio Marini and started broadcasting music out of my PA system, which I had because I'm a musician, so we had a generator. We'd crank up this generator and start broadcasting music out into the street. And just because in this neighborhood, normally there's music coming from all the clubs, and so it was just sort of like, eh, it felt so weird without it. So the first day I did it, it was just for me. You know, oh, I want to party. I put on music and had a Bloody Mary or whatever. And then as I walked my dog that afternoon, all these people came out of their houses. It turned out a lot of people were staying all around. They were all like, oh, thanks so much for the music. And I was like, oh, wow. It's... And it sort of had a power that amazed even me. And I've been in music my whole life. I was surprised to see the power of the music that it had to... Um, you know, help with the support of the community. So then it was, then I was talking on the microphone too, so I'd find out, oh, so-and-so needs milk, so-and-so has canned milk. And, you know, I tend to do what I could. I felt like, what am I going to do, go and get in a boat and rescue people? It's not my thing. I'm going to play music for the guys who are doing that. That was sort of my way to contribute. Was, and they really, I mean, they went nuts for us. They would go, when we would go to the National Guard and play music, they'd be like, oh, thank you so much. You don't know how much it means. I mean, the, the general would take me aside and be like, thank you so much. You're relaxing the guys. You don't know what, the, you know, they were out there seeing a lot of crazy stuff, and you're really doing the good thing for the guys. I basically run the generator two hours in the day, two hours at night. Two hours in the day, I would do laundry. And then while I was doing that, I was doing the radio. And then uh, I would do laundry or run the microwave and cook and do whatever I had to do with the electric appliance. And then at night, I would do the same thing. We would like run the DVD player sometimes and then we'd have movie night and everyone in the neighborhood would come over and then, or, and then run the radio and charge everybody's cell phone battery, charge everybody's laptop, you know, while you're running the generator. The Salvation Army for people who need it was great and they came with ice, food. Um, I guess it was mostly just ice, food, water. And they'd come just two people, two or three people, two or three, you know, older folks in an old ambulance, just come through your neighborhood with the bullhorn and just kind of tossing it out and just ask you, hey, you need three meals, you know, instead of you'd ask them for one, take three, you know, and they'd give them to somebody, that kind of thing. It was real nice. And they'd see a dog, because we had dogs, they'd be like, oh, you need, you know, you want one for your dog or you want dog food, you know, there was a lot of that. Now, Savage Army was definitely here early and making their rounds. And then Red Cross, I never saw. I never saw them until completely after the whole deal, about a month or less, more later. They had set up um, in parking lots in various places around town where you could sort of go to them and get a bucket and some bleach and a mop to clean up your house. It's the best way to prepare you for whatever's going to happen to you. It's not for me to like make sure you got a spare tire and make sure you got an air pump and make sure you got your flu shot and make sure the best way is just prepare you to think, you know, prepare you to be able to think on any circumstance and improvise. And then in that case, you're good for good to go. It's obvious who thrived. The people I know who thro who throve. <laughs> the people who thrived were people who were independent thinkers. It was all people who live who were almost off the grid anyway. Like you know, people like myself and people like me who just thrive, and other people I know, many people I know who did, you know, thrive. And not in a way of you know, not taking advantage of the people. I'm not talking about people who stole 25 plasma TVs. I'm people who survived and got something out of it that they're actually carrying into a better space in their life now, which is what happened to me. I mean, this thing totally improved my, you know what I mean, I got so much out of this that was uplifting for me personally by my actions during it and seeing what I'm all about.